from that, the, the real estate business today is literally one guy who runs the show, two acquisitions people underneath him, and the software runs everything else. So he literally feeds the software, um, the list information, and automatically stacks and skip traces it for him. We, oh, I'm sorry, and we have one, we have my niece working part-time sending text messages, and then we've outsourced, uh, actually part of the partnership I had now, we first we outsourced to this other company that used to be called REI Vault, which is now part of realestateinvestor.com, to have our lead management and our cold caller all done for us, um, hired, trained, managed. So they did all the calling. My acquisitions people just contract the deals virtually um, in a couple different markets. And then the, the guy that runs the show sends out all the listings and, and out to the buyers list, um, close the deals. Hey everyone, Jamel Gibbs here. Welcome to another podcast episode. Today, we're, we're talking with a guy who's been in a real estate investing business for quite some time now. In fact, he just merged with realestateinvestor.com. If you guys aren't familiar with it, it's, a, it's obviously, hey, the name says it all, right? Realestateinvestor.com. But I met Robert back in, I want to say October, at a mastermind, at a, uh, an event that we went to together. And, uh, you know, a lot of guys in the industry were there and um, had a chance to meet him through a mutual friend named Joe. And uh, we decided that, um, you know, I decided to get him on a call because I think he's one of the guys that you need to listen to in today's market. Now, one of the things that he specializes in is allowing his real estate investing business to run itself. So that's something I actually want to talk about today. And in addition to that, uh, following up or the importance of following up with your motivated sellers. So Robert, what's up, man? What's up, Jamal? Thanks for having me on. And yeah, it was a pleasure meeting you in, in Tampa. I think it was October, early October, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, man, it was a pleasure meeting me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, for sure, for sure. No, I'm just kidding, I love, I love being introduced to anyone that's a family man and loves real estate, and you definitely have a passion for what you do, so I love that. I appreciate Thank that, man. Family. Well, likewise, man, it's been, a, it's been a real pleasure meeting you. I know we've been, we met in person for the first time in Tampa, yep. but then we, uh, we decided you know, to, to jump on this call, but we've been communicating through social media a little bit as well, and I'm looking forward to seeing you know, uh, how we can do future business together as well, man. But um, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself, how you got started in real estate, and then we'll, uh, we'll take it from there. I'll give the super short version on that. <laughs> There's a long story. The short version is I spent 10 years plus reading, studying, and going to everything possible to learn real estate. I was the epitome of the new guy who overanalyzed everything and didn't do anything right? Which is hard to, hard to, for most to believe when they see where I'm at today, right. right? But that's the truth. I spent over a decade and it wasn't until I burned all my bridges, uh, sunk all the boats, whatever, whatever analogy you want to put in, I dove all in at the worst possible time for me financially, but realized that was the missing ingredient was going all in and taking massive action. So I did, and I never looked back and that was Wow, that was actually almost six, seven years ago at this point. It's kind of kind of crazy to look back on that. So that was back in, I'm born and raised in Metro Detroit, Michigan area. Um, did over 500 deals back there. Owned a property management company at one point with over 500 doors. Recently merged my software business that I've been building for over three years with now realestateinvestor.com to be able to offer, as it says, even more to real estate investors. Everything underneath one roof is the, the vision of where we're headed my real estate uh, business about just over four years ago, I moved to Tampa before I got into software um, because I figured out how to virtually run my business, how to do it all through technology. I started leveraging technology for everything. We replaced three jobs with it. And kind of all that was the beginnings of what is now today, the software business and why the real estate business runs itself. It's just a lot of leverage, a lot of delegation, um, and a lot of doing things immediately when they need to be done. So lots of lessons learned. I just uh, enjoy life living in Tampa with palm trees. and. <laughs> hey, I, I don't blame you, man. You, you, I mean, think about Michigan versus Tampa. 
I mean, you think about the cold weather versus the warm weather. I don't blame you, man. Love the story. I love the fact that you decided. So you started looking into the real estate business, I'm guessing early 2000s. Yeah, if not before that. I mean, I, I, I got the little spark in me um, in high school seeing a Russ Whitney commercial about if my parents just owned another property, <laughs> they could have done this. And I was like, oh my God, that's what my family and everybody needs to do. And then, and then yeah, started really studying it. And primarily uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad was like gotcha. the first, like that and Carlton Sheets, No Money Down, were like the first two major things I started yeah. studying. Um, early 2000s and then even all the way up until uh, 2008 I paid to go to a, a, a Richard Kiyosaki seminar when I went to a free one right the free one that sells you the ticket to the next one I went to the next one where they wanted to sell me more stuff um, but even all the way up to then was the furthest I ever got and still you know bought and nice. sold no real estate I love the fact that you know number one I started off with the Carlton Sheets course myself this was in, I was a junior in high school. That's when I started looking into real estate. Uh, I used to work at a real estate firm, a real estate, uh, it was called the Carroll Gardens Association in Brooklyn, but it was a real estate company in Brooklyn at 14 years old. So I was in junior high school, going into high school. Um, I thought that, you know, I love the fact that you mentioned it took you 10 years to really change things for yourself. Um, a lot of people face that these days. Yeah. Why, why do you think that's the case? You know, I can, I can look back and tell you why. For me, it was, it was a shift in my mind, right? And it, not, I can literally look back. We have conversations about this today, me and my wife, that what's really changed over the last decade? Nothing more than the way we think about things. That's right. right? And so back then, it was always this thought that maybe I was raised with it, whatever, but got to learn more, got to learn more. Can't, can't go do something, right? You see it all over social media too. Like, oh, I don't have the right contract, so I can't make an offer. I don't know where to get the right comps from, so I can't make an offer. I don't know where the right list is, so I can't get leads. I, you know, there, there must be a better, it's the constant pursuit, I think, what I've pinpointed it down to today is everybody's looking for that easy button where I click it and money just shows up in my mailbox. And the reality is it doesn't exist. The problem is there's tons of people marketing stuff saying that it does. <laughs> so we buy that thing, we chase that thing, we watch that thing. And the reality is what I came to a realization of and shifted, you know, almost seven years ago was if I just took action on anything that I learned, Right. And the result was I learned way more by doing that than any of the other stuff I studied, bought, trained, looked at. Yeah. And I'm not negating studying and training and all that because I've spent hundreds of thousands in real estate education since then and masterminds and how we met. Right. But it was, it, but it started from actually buying real estate, actually just doing some marketing and it, and it failed. But the bottom line is I did it. Right. And that's how I learned, not because somebody told me this thing was going to work or not and overanalyzing it for all that time. Took action, man. And that's, that's, that's the difference maker, really, at the end of the day. Yeah. Right? You know? I, mm -hmm. Go ahead. I was going to say, I saw people, what blew my mind is back then, I, I, when I would meet some people in real estate, because I started doing mortgages. So I started meeting, real, I'm like, how are you making money in real estate? You don't know anything that I know. <laughs> oh, because they're, they're actually making offers. They're actually talking to people about buying and selling houses. That's how they made money. They just did it. That's it. They didn't care how much they knew. You know, it's, it's kind of funny that you mentioned just doing it because I didn't have a mentor when I first started. For the first five years, I didn't have a mentor. First uh, four years, I didn't have a mentor in real estate. I just did it. And that's, how, that's actually how I met my first mentor, Steve. And, uh, you know, Steve, at that time, he owned 120 houses. I was inspired by that. I wanted to do the same thing. So if you want to do what someone else did, you go to the person that did it, right? But the whole point was, I love the, uh, again, you know, I'm, I'm going to say this again. I love the fact that you mentioned it took you so long because a lot of people suffer from that analysis paralysis. They come to these podcasts, they watch the YouTube videos, they buy the courses, they spend the money on education, but unfortunately they just don't do. And the information is great, but if you don't get out there and get 
it done, it's never going to happen. Doesn't matter how much you know. So I love the fact, and then you said it took you 10 years. I think at that point, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, you probably didn't want it bad enough before the 10 year mark. Is that true or false? That's, that's true. Cause that, you know what? I, I wanted it enough to talk about it all the time. I didn't even got to a point where my, my wife said at one point, like, I don't want to hear you talk about what you can do in real estate anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Just do it. Go, go actually do it and stop exactly. talking about all the ideas, concepts and how much money can be made and the lifestyle we can have if you're not going to just go do it. That's right, man. Yeah. So, so, so let's talk a little bit about. OK, so obviously you, you took action. You're in a completely different space right now. Yeah. What what did you do to get started? What was your first investment deal? What, what did it look like? Yeah, so my, my first one, um, actually, before I quit the job, I started taking a little bit of action, right? So I didn't take a lot of action. I took a little action. I got, uh, I started telling my family, I studied a course, I put out some bandit signs. And uh, I got a bunch of phone calls. And I actually got some contracts, but that didn't, that didn't go to so my first two deals, one from bandit signs, I made uh, 500 bucks off of because I, I uh, met a guy who said, I said, I need to find buyers is the missing thing. I got all these deals, but I don't know how to get rid of them. So a title company guy introduced me to a handful of buyers in the state. Boom, that's where I got my first deal. And it's eventually what led into hundreds of deals and taking off when I went all in though. The first deal before that though, actually came from an actually good friend of mine today. Uh, I I guess he was kind of a mentor in a sense. What happened is, is I met this guy trying to figure out networking and he owned the largest homebusters franchise in the state of Michigan over a decade um, there. And one of my family members had a, uh, someone going into the nursing home. So it turned into a probate deal. I, you know, said, Hey, if you, you know, pay, pay me to teach me how to do the deal. So that was actually my first deal. And then I used them, I made like $4,500, but it took over six months because of the courts got involved yeah. and all this other stuff. And he stayed with me the whole time and walked the house with me, showed me the checklist to go through. Um, eventually he bought the house and made 4,500 off it. And I put that into the bandit signs and marketing that the $500 deal came from, but then that didn't go anywhere. Then so when I went all in is when everything changed. Got it. So was this a wholesale deal or was it? Yeah. Okay. Got it. So you started off wholesaling first 100 percent. got it or have you done anything else outside of wholesaling at all or yeah wholesaling so wholesaling once i went all in i had already met a couple other relationships i was fostering but it just wasn't connecting right until i gave all of my attention to real estate i i had enough of a need i won't go into that but basically i was like i said worst worst possible position to go all in but i did finally i wanted it bad enough that i gave i didn't matter I was going to sink if that's what it took. Um, that, sometimes it, that's what it takes, right? Sometimes you, you, you have nowhere to go but up that's and it. you have to, you know, you, when your back is up against the wall, you make unbelievable things happen. You that's know? it. And then Fox it, didn't do a ton of wholesale deals, um, but then I recognized I was mostly wholesaling rentals. So uh, from that, I started getting into the rehab. I actually found a guy that it was, uh, J, I was starting to do JV wholesale deals so I could get more deals because my, my buyer's needs were more massive. I got really good with the buyer side. And um, then I started partnering, you know, hey, I'll give you half the deal. I'll bring the deal. You rehab it and pay for it. And then I'll sell it to my buyers that turned into private funds to make it more profitable. So I started rehabbing rental properties. It's how I became a property manager too because it all – Rehab, property management, and rentals all kind of came as a, I just kept saying yes to stuff, which <laughs> I don't necessarily recommend, but in the beginning, that was good for me. It kept fostering what is now today. Um, so yeah, I've done a lot of, I've done probably a couple hundred rehabs, um, all primarily rental grade properties. So when I say that though, it's retail rehabs. Like we did high-end retail rehabs, $100,000 houses. Um, nice. And then rented them. Nice, man. So- I love, I love the fact that you were able to branch off and then you utilize real estate because once you, once you started, honestly, it just snowballed into all of these other aspects. You, you mentioned a property management company, but yep. you started with the wholesaling, got into the rehabbing and just kind of 
went with the flow from that point forward. Love that, man. So you're obviously operating a good size business today. And you said that it's operating on its own. What, what does that look like for our listeners? Like how, well, you know what, let's, let's talk about what your business looks like. And then we'll talk about how our, our listeners can do that. So I will, uh, I'll give you two parts to that, right? Because prior to getting into software, I did have a pretty big operation. I had a property management division, a rehab division, um, a team with a COO, uh, four acquisitions people, dispositions, and a couple other VAs running transactional stuff. Um, one thing I can tell you and the big takeaway anyone should have, the one thing book is priceless. The one because, thing book? Yeah, from Gary Keller, because focus is everything right so don't don't hear all this and say i should go do a property management and rehabs and wholesale and pick one go all in when i got into software the unexpected um another roller coaster in my life had a great lifestyle everything was wonderful and because i chose another business line that turned into crushing my real estate business so to speak um, which had me reinvented again Today's real estate business is 100% wholesaling. I got rid of my property management business in 2018, um, stopped rehabbing in 2018, all because I was focused on two babies, my software and my actual son that's two years old now. Um, Congratulations, man. Yeah, thanks. Um, from that, the, the real estate business today is literally one guy who runs the show, two acquisitions people underneath him, and the software runs everything else. So he literally feeds the software, um, the list information and automatically stacks and skip traces it for him. We, oh, I'm sorry, and we have one, we have my niece working part-time sending text messages and then we've outsourced, uh, actually part of the partnership I had now, we first we outsourced to this other company that used to be called REI Vault, which is now part of realestateinvestor.com to have our lead management and our cold caller all done for us, um, hired, trained, managed. So they did all the calling my acquisitions people just contract the deals virtually um, in a couple different markets. And then the, the guy that runs the show sends out all the listings and, and out to the buyer's list, um, close the deals. I mean, it's, I, so you I literally mean, have, you said you have, enough. he's, you have one acquisition specialist right two. now, right? Two, two acquisition specialists. Two. One good one and one, uh, one we'll see. Got it. Got it. And the main one is running the entire show for you. Yeah, he does the he does the he compiles all the list data and sets it up for marketing. He manages the acquisitions team and he actually does the dispositions today to do. Got it. Got it. Awesome, man. So our listeners are relatively, you know, some of them are new, some of them are more experienced. We're talking to the newer investors and those who are experienced but maybe looking to uh walk away from the day-to-day -day aspect of their business at this point in, the, in time. So what's the first hire that you made? What's the first thing that you did in order to get your business to where it is today? So the answer is going to differ for everybody, truthfully, right? It is. And what I mean by that is hire the best advice I'd give today looking backwards is hire for your weakness. Right. So if you're weak at sales, you need a salesperson. Right. You're not going to live without sales. If you're if you're naturally really good at sales, then you probably suck at administrative, following up on the phone, scheduling appointments, doing paperwork. So hire some sort of administrator or leads manager. Um, so depending on which one you're weak in is the one you should hire for first. Either of those two are the first hires in my book. Um, but before even that, I think there's a step that I've learned over the years and from leveraging technology that technology is your first step, right? You can actually replace, I, I told you, I replaced three job roles in my bigger company when we developed the software and I moved to Tampa. It literally was, um, the first thing that has to happen is, are you following up, right? That's, that's, that's usually the administrative person you need. And if you're not, you're probably just not utilizing technology that'll do it for you. Right. And so that's step one. It's organize all your stuff in one place. So if you're disorganized, your stuff's all over the place, either you need to hire someone to get you organized or you need to get the software technology that organizes you so that you then can hire a person that it's easier for them to do. That's a mistake I've made in hiring, right? Yeah. Is hiring a person not knowing what I want them to do 
and thinking they're going to figure it out almost never works out. The person that's going to make a great employee or staff member usually is the type of person that also needs direction and to be told what to do. So you need to figure that out first, at least some of the steps that they can improve, but you got to give them something. Otherwise they're, you're almost setting them up to fail. Another thing I want to, I wanted to uh, ask you and, 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 you know, I'm sure you're probably going to agree with this. Should you have something running for yourself before you hire someone? Because a lot of people, jump into this business, right? Let's just say, for example, wholesaling. A lot of people want to get into the wholesaling business and they want to start hiring acquisition specialists right off the bat because of all of the hype that they see online or yeah. from social media and things like that. Is that, in your opinion, is that the smartest thing to do in the beginning? I am going to 100% agree with what you just said and I'm going to give two points with it. One, do not compare yourself where you are today you. to someone's 10 years of experience in business. They've already went through a bunch of ups and downs to get there. So what you, you see on social media today, you're not in the same place, right? To do that. But it, but that clouds that. So that's thank one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's the truth, right? I do, I do it. I'm, I'm a culprit of it myself going, Hey, why aren't we there? And they're like, they've been around for 10 years. We've been around for three, like so. <laughs> so that's number one. And then number two, yeah, it comes back to the last point I made, right? Like if you don't know how to do the job, I mean, it can be simple too. When I say it is literally just write down on a notepad or record yourself. What did you do today? If you don't know what those steps are that they need to do that you do, then you're, you're trying to hire somebody so for them to figure it out for you. And that, that's an, it is an exercise in asking to fail, yep. right? Because they're, that person isn't going to be successful because they're thinking they're coming into like, yeah, cool, I'm going to run your leads. But they don't know what that means. And if you don't know what that means, then you both don't know what it means. Right. And I, I would agree. I think if you need to make the phone calls yourself before you have somebody to do phone calls for you, you need to go to an appointment before you have somebody do appointments for you. You need to make offers over the phone before you have somebody do offers for you. You need to do the text messaging before you have somebody do text messaging for you. So you can see what yeah. that is. And then you'll be able to coach, hold them accountable and know what they should be able to do. That's right, man. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you want to, you know, I, I like to, before I tell my students, for example, to hire anyone, do, do a couple of deals yourself. Do three to five deals yourself before you start going out there and, and, and you know, showing someone that's going to be added to your team before you start hiring people uh, how to do it because then you know what the ins and outs are. You may not know everything, but you know enough to teach them. Uh, yes. Knowing everything will come in time and you, you'll never know everything. This stuff's there's still stuff. I've been doing this for 20, almost 20 years now. And there's still stuff that I learned every single day. Yeah. So, but you know enough to be able to operate a real business. If you can't teach it to someone else because you don't know what you're doing in the first place, that's a recipe for failure, you know? Yeah. And you don't even know to add to that. It's, it's knowing what they're going through. Like if you've never done it, you don't even have a clue what their day is like. You don't know what they're experiencing or how to um, have any sort of empathy towards that, right? So you're, you're, not, you're not being a good leader if you haven't first followed something and did it. That's right. Love it, man. So if we had to give, let's say, a three-step process for our listeners to get started in hiring their first person or and automating their real estate business. We mentioned software. So obviously when it comes to automation, it requires a couple of different things. It requires people and software, right? So yeah. if we're thinking along those lines, what would be a good three-step process for our listeners to get started with that process? Yeah. So number one, organize, right? And so organize, I'm going to give you some free stuff. Organize could be as simple as putting stuff on a whiteboard, right? Like what is, and by organize, it's literally, you know, think of the business. So the business flows like this. We have number one, you ain't getting any leads if you ain't doing marketing, I, I, no matter what, you got to do some sort of marketing. Don't care what it is, but you got, you have to do marketing, whether that's JVs, whatever, it's still marketing, networking, marketing, right? So what's your marketing that you're going to do? What can you afford? What's it in your budget, right? So organize that. What are the things you want to go after or are interested in? right? 
then what are you actually doing on marketing? If you, uh, so I have a seven whiteboard theory, right? This is how I first learned and where my software was developed off of. My first mentor gave me this. So the second board is what are your hot leads? So now you got marketing, your people are calling you. What are the hot leads? Why, why do you, they need to be front of mind because those are the people you need to follow up with all the time until you get a deal. Then if you're wholesaling, what deals do you have under contract? And when do you have to close by and how much money should you make off of it? Those are the deals you're now marketing out to buyers, right? And then you could have another board that says under contract with a buyer. And then, and then when is it supposed to close by? So now you have marketing, hot leads, contracts that you're promoting, deals with a buyer. The last one is what I call a jackpot board. What money did you deposit in your bank account, right? So there's your boom. And if you have rehab, you could add in one or two boards in there, but wholesaling is the quickest way to cash. So you got to organize all that. That's a free way of doing it. Or I'm sorry, 20 bucks, you can go down to Walmart, buy a whiteboard, right? Or use a yellow pad, right? Or Google Docs, whatever. You could do it for free, but just have it organized that flow. Hot leads, marketing hot leads, under contract with seller, under contract with buyer, money in your bank account. That's the flow of the business. That's what your mindset should be focused on every day. That's what you should look at every day. That's why I used whiteboards. If you have a couple of bucks, get a software that does it all for you that just controls all of your list data in one place that you can market to, flows into the stages of the business until you close the deal. So it should do exactly what I just said with the whiteboards, but have it in a software. So it's one clean flow and one access that organizes it all. Because until you're organized, if you're chaotic, anyone you hire is going to be chaotic too. Yep. Right? So organize. Then automate everything that you can think of to automate before you hire. This is the, something I didn't do. I didn't know, right? I didn't know anything about technology back then. So I actually hired people like, well, I hate doing this. This takes a lot of time. I'm hiring that VA. This sucks. This takes a lot of time. I'm hiring that VA. But I identified by organizing what was missing and what we didn't want to do. So you could do that. Or you can learn that there is technology to automate this. You can automate calendar reminders in your Google or iPhone to remind you to follow up with somebody. You can get Google Voice if you need a free number that you can text and call from, right? Um, or again, I'm biased, of course, realestateinvestor.com has an entry level software that does all of this for you, but it automates all of your follow-up. You've got to automate that part because when leads come in, you've got to, con so if you have a full-time job or a part-time job, someone has to follow up. So automate that as much as you possibly can before you worry about hiring someone because automation is a lot cheaper than a hire, right? Yeah. Any VA is going to cost you, even a cheap VA is five bucks an hour, two bucks an hour, whatever you think you can get them for, it still costs more than technology and you don't need them. Then once you've organized and you have, uh, so you've organized everything, you've automated as much as you can through those two processes, you will find everything you're missing or weakened or what is falling through the cracks, yeah. write down bullet points about what that is and how you would want it done and now delegate and or hire the person to do those things. And now you know what the job role is, what they need to do, and it may not be an acquisition person. My, my bet is, I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna blend, but I think most people get into this because they can talk to people and they're okay with the sales. They just need someone to do all the administrative stuff, uh, the VA grunt work, paperwork, all that stuff. So you're one of the two, you're either that person or you suck at sales and it's why you wanna hire a salesperson right? I would, I would push you to get outside your comfort zone and talk to the people anyways. Um, but that would also be the first hire I'd be looking for once I got a couple of deals under my belt. Yeah, most definitely. So we said organize, automate, and then delegate. That's it. Love it, man. Love it. Three-step process for you guys right there. Uh, organize, automate, delegate. And if you need to listen to that part of the uh, podcast again, to catch exactly how to do that, Robert just explained it for you. Definitely do that. But consider doing this, in my opinion, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Robert. Consider doing this once you know a little bit about the business. If you're brand new, this is probably not the time for you to be thinking about that. But start preparing your mind for it. If you've been doing it for a little while, you've done you know, five, ten deals maybe, start thinking about replacing yourself in your business because – Honestly, 80% of a lot of people's efforts is better than 100% of your effort. Heck yeah. So you can literally walk away from, like Robert did, from 
your business while other people operate your business for you. But the only way to do that and to get started doing that is to know exactly what you need to teach to your team first. You need to be a good team leader first at the end of the day. So our listeners, uh, you mentioned a couple of books on, uh, you mentioned the one thing uh, I'm going to link that in the description box. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, if uh, you're listening on a podcast, you can go to amazon.com or just check out this video on YouTube. I encourage you to do that. Uh, that way you can see Robert and I face to face and, um, you know, get a real feel for what this podcast is like, but check the description box on a YouTube video and you'll, you'll be able to be able to uh, check out that book. Um, are there any other books that you would recommend uh, in regards to delegating or automating business uh, that you've personally benefited from? Man, I, this is, I was waiting for that question. This is the, this is the rabbit hole for me because I love to study and grow. Um, one thing is definitely at the top of that list because it's, I, I've reread it several times because it's just, it's just a good reminder that we, we try to do too much um, and we don't focus enough. Mm. Um, with that, another book that I would highly encourage and recommend, I'll give the easier version of the book. There is a harder version of the same book. Uh, it's Think and Grow Rich, right? Because the reality is, right? And, and you could take a lot away just from the title, right? Mm-hmm. But the reality is, Every single thing that ever occurs, including everything we just talked about, all starts here first. I told you in the beginning, nothing in my business changed until this changed first. So if you don't get this right, yeah. Let me add one to that. As a man thinketh. You ever? That's, that's, yes, 100%. Even shorter, easier read. Well, I don't know about easier. It might be, it might go deeper, (laughs) Right? It's, a, it's, a, it's a short read. You can get yes. done in 30 minutes if you wanted to. Yeah, great book. Um, that, so I'm, I'm, my books are not going to be like in the business books, right? They're, they're literally like these things Mindset. are going to affect your business, though. The other one I would recommend, um, one, one you may not be able to find because I think it's only available at his website. So there's a big one that I'm very deep into right now is called The Warrior Journey. And it started with The Warrior Book with Garrett J. White. Very massively into that right now. But one of the guys that went through his course and has his own thing that was very helpful because it helps you structure your day right, get everything going right, is called, um, I think it's called Make It Happen mm. by Sean <laughs> Whalen. It's, it's the, it's, you know, warrior book is like five, Sean's 600 on, pages. Sean's on Facebook, isn't he? Oh, massively. Yeah. It's Lion's Den. I'm part yeah. of his Lion's Den. Been, been in it since the beginning. That's actually how I found warrior book and Garrett J. White. Cause I was following Sean and then found out like, oh, so he learned this from somebody else. So let me go find that guy yeah. and learn from that guy myself. Right. So that's, that's usually my process. Um, so I'm deep into the warrior journey and learning more about myself. Um, but that his book is, his book is like the cliff notes of, of what do you just got to go do? Here's what you got to go do. And right. I think most people today are looking for that. Just give me the tactics. I don't need all the, I needed all the why. And, but the why is what allows you to overthink stuff. So just yeah. here's what you need to do. Step one, two, three. I loved you. Ask, what are the three steps? And even I would say, you're right. The people need to be doing deals to, to hit those three. But everyone on here, even starting out, the number one is just get organized. Yep organize and take action love it man love it so our listeners uh if they wanted to get in contact with you uh what what should they do realestateinvestor.com robert at realestateinvestor.com is my email um those would be the best two places to get in contact and learn anything about what we got going on and listen don't spam robert please he just gave out his email address but uh i I only check it once a day (laughs) so he wants you to contact him but, uh, you know, definitely reach out to him if you're sincere uh, and, and you're not looking to, you know, spam him with, with certain things. I appreciate you guys for that. Yes. So realestateinvestor.com. Realestateinvestor.com has been around for a long time. And I remember when Colin Egbert had realestateinvestor.com. And I guess Gary uh, and you and Gary okay. just kind of merged it, uh, bought it out or something like that. I don't know how that went, but. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been around story. for a long time. Long story, huh? 
That's something yeah. we'll talk about offline. But yes. uh, you know, so realestateinvestor.com, Robert at realestateinvestor.com is is Robert's email address. And if you had to give some last words, some words of wisdom to our listeners, what would those words be? Take massive and immediate action. To add to that, just had a great call with my health coach. If you are thinking about something for more than 10 seconds or you're thinking about it again, just go do it. Stop mm. thinking about it. It's clouding your mind and thinking, and, and it means it's something that needs to be done. There's a, I'll give you another three steps, right? I'll throw in another one because um, it goes with this. Anything you're thinking about, do it right now. Delegate it to somebody else if it's not something that you should do right now or delegate it by scheduling it in your calendar so it, it has a time and a date and it's going to get done or delete it and forget about it because it doesn't need to be there. I think my buddy David Oswald uh, from New Jersey, um, he told me about that uh, one time and uh, that's exactly how he does it. Yeah. So uh, good stuff, man. Really, really good stuff. So guys, check out Robert at realestateinvestor.com. Uh, check out his website, realestateinvestor.com. And listen to what he said. Get out there, take massive action in order to get massive results. If you want results, you have to do something. The education is great, but the implementation is where it counts. If you're not implementing, then you're not going to get anywhere. All right, guys. But again, start thinking about delegating your business. Start thinking about how you can improve your business and re while removing yourself from the business at the same time. Robert's business operates itself on its own 100%. And he operates his other business, obviously, but he wouldn't be able to operate his other business if he didn't have the, the real estate business delegated. So start considering that, but get good. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be great. You don't have to be the best at uh, what you do. But as long as you know how to teach someone else how to do it for you, chances are they're going to be better than you anyway, and you'll be making money in your real estate investing business. So start thinking that way. Start thinking about removing yourself, getting out of the daily grind of real estate. And then that's how you create true time and freedom, which is exactly what each and every single person on this call, on this podcast, everyone interested in real estate in general wants we want time and freedom that's it 100 right? so guys it's been a real pleasure having you listen to us uh and looking forward to the next one i'll talk to you then